Across the country, people aged 40 and above were targeted in the latest general COVID-19 vaccination drive as the government of Rwanda continues to protect the population from the deadly pandemic. From Gatsibo and Ngoma in the east through Huye in the south to Nyamasheche and Rubavu, thousands of citizens received their first dose while others took their second jab of COVID-19 vaccine on Wednesday. The recipients of the vaccine, especially the elderly, say it was valuable for them because they were fearful of being killed by the plague as they were in the vulnerable groups. It was long overdue because we've been waiting for the vaccination for a while because we were registered for the vaccination a while ago. It will help me overcome the pandemic as opposed to how it would have affected me if I wasn't vaccinated. Just like the first dose, I am happy to receive the second dose of the vaccine. I have not had any problems. It will protect me from this deadly virus. I was afraid of contracting the virus before being vaccinated. You understand that the virus devastates the old, but now I'm lucky to be vaccinated. I thank God I've been vaccinated and that protects me from the severe effects of the virus. Now still on the COVID-19 vaccination campaign across the country, earlier this evening we caught up with Dr. Saben Sanzimana, who elaborated more on how the campaign is going and the status of the pandemic in the country a few days after the lockdown was lifted. Yeah, so the uh, vaccination campaign is uh, actually has started, um, I would say, uh, yesterday uh, in Kigali. It's continuing in other provinces, especially the district that uh, uh, have been most affected by uh, this, this virus. Generally, we're in lockdown, like the city of Kigali, a uh, few few weeks ago. Um, so we've started with, uh, uh, of course, the people who are most at risk and those. Uh, four years and above in the city of Kigali, in the provinces, we are also uh, looking at those categories. Uh, most people who have some comorbidities. Uh, we are also uh, looking at uh, how we can protect pregnant women uh, because we've seen that they are, uh, when they get this virus, they are, they are highly affected. Uh, so as we get more vaccines, more doses, um, we, we are actually distributing so quickly. Uh, it's, it's actually interesting when you see Vaccines are coming just after uh, the, the three weeks lockdown and we can uh, protect as many people as possible and as fast as possible. Certainly, that is good news. And to hear that also pregnant women are among the categories. Is it all pregnant women or pregnant women are, that are more at risk? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, we, we we can't cover everyone at the same time, uh, and we are prioritizing generally with the women in the second and third uh, trimester generally. Uh, but as we get more vaccines and as we assess more on uh, uh, the, the science about other uh, groups, we shall expand more. Uh, but uh, as power guidelines currently, uh, after the uh, 12 weeks of pregnancy, we, we prioritize all women who are pregnant and willing to take these vaccines. Absolutely. Uh, what Can you tell us how much vaccines that you currently have uh, and is the momentum going to continue like this? Yeah, it, it looks like we're getting uh, different uh, uh, batches of vaccines. Doses are coming. Um, a few days ago, we received uh, more than 200,000 doses that are currently being distributed across the country. Uh, every two weeks, we are receiving uh, uh, batches of vaccines. Uh, initially, they were quite uh, small numbers. Now we see the increase, uh, hundreds of thousands. So this trend looks going to keep keep uh, uh, increasing. And uh, as the vaccines land, our principle is that we don't keep in the fridges. Uh, but rather we distribute as quick as as possible. And based on the on the on your assessment as as RBC, where does the incidence and transmission rate stand currently, especially after lifting the lockdown? Is it too early to to assess the situation? Uh, we've started to see uh, some some good trends. Um, actually, yesterday and today we were observing the data very closely. Um, there are some. Uh, positive news that are coming out, uh, especially with the city of Kigali. The incidence rate seems to be 
are declining, uh, the hospitalization, the people who have been actually uh, admitted daily also uh, seems to reduce uh, at an interesting rate. But uh, it's too early to say that we, we are under positive trends. So we have to be very careful. We have to actually to, to help this trend to be uh, better than it could be. Uh, but it shows that the lockdown that we went through has, has, has helped. And we, we start to observe this in our own statistics. Uh, let's continue to observe that in, in other provinces. We know there are some sectors currently under lockdown because the incidence was quite high. Uh, so we keep a uh, close eye. At uh, very briefly before I let you go, Dr. So very recently the Rwanda Biomedical Center announced that effective 9th August, the COVID test, rapid test cost will be not more than 5,000 Rwanda francs, but that is subject to, to different interpretations according to some people. So could you perhaps clarify for us, is it less than 5,000 or 5,000? And then secondly, uh, will this also apply to government hospitals because the announcement said it applies to private clinics? Yes, thank you. Uh, it's actually another uh, positive trend that we, we've seen um, on the global market of these rapid diagnostic tests. The overall cost has, has, has reduced. Uh, here in Rwanda, also, we're going to get the cheaper test, actually better test and cheaper tests. It's an interesting uh, shift uh, in private clinics uh, because these tests are, are being uh, uh, sold in, in, in private clinics, but in public uh, facilities, uh, there, there's, uh, there's no cost for that uh, for, uh, for symptomatic people. And, and those who have been um, actually in contact with positive cases. Uh, so 5,000 from 10,000 is a good move and we will keep uh, monitoring the uh, global market and also the new tests that will be coming uh, and see how the cost can go down as well as the precision, the accuracy of the tests that we, we are getting into um, our lab network. Uh, so um, 5,000 is the maximum. Uh, we'll be very happy if uh, uh, these clinics and also uh, those ones that are importing these, these, these tests can even sell at a lower cost. What interests us as, a, as, a, as an institution, but also as a sector, is when we see more people getting for, for tests and without paying, paying uh, more money. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Sabay.